What causes pain and suffering? What makes these lives that we live worse than they actually are? I believe it is the consumption of information and stimulus. We are nothing but sponges to the external world around us. We are not but people constantly on the cusp of learning new information. So our minds must remain open at most times. And this is no fault of ours. It is no problem at all that we as, as people tend to always be on the journey of learning, always on the journey of accumulating new information. I believe that learning is one of the key aspects to living a fruitful life. So in no way, shape, or form is learning new information negative. It is when we allow ourselves to consume that of which we know is negative that is detrimental to us. Adding fuel to this negative fire through um, attention and overthought rather than allowing your energy to be focused more on letting those things go and focusing more on what would benefit you. We need to focus more on accepting things as they are rather than how we want them to be. Because in life, many things don't go our way and it's how I was talking about before with expectational freedom. The more we expect out of this world, the more disappointed we're going to be. That's not to say not have any expectations. That's to say limit your expectations of things that are outside of your control so as to allow yourself to be existing without a constant tap on your shoulder or carrying something on your back in reference to the negative aspects and possibilities of this world. We too often project our expectations onto the world. And this world is full of other individuals with their own expectations. We are a contender, but we are not the center. That is to say that you are a contender. You are a important, valuable part of this world. But one must come to the realization of Sonder and realize that Everybody is a part of this world. Everybody has a piece and and role and everybody's important in their own way. Everybody has their own complex life going on. So this expectation of focal pointedness is ultimately unrealistic. This somewhat absurd egoism can be both a result of high and low self-esteem. Or more so self-imaging. The desire to be a focal point is a society in riddled mindset. It is something that's constructed, it's something that we're taught to do rather than something that we naturally do. Um, I think humans and people overall are naturally moral and naturally uh, empathetic towards those around them. And not that I think empathy has to be taught in some way, but there are things that take us away from, you know, the 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 companionship of of those around you it is almost as if the fact that we are different causes others to view us as the same or causes our own perception of other people to change into looking at them as if they're the same person when entirely we're different it is as if the society we're in teaches us to base a lot of ourselves and base our foundations off of comparison (laughs) and comparison is the killer of joy and the extinction of comfortable individuality all the bias trapped within our faulty comparisons entraps us in a state where um, most of what we're basing off of and most of what we're being compared for is what happens physically and physically we're all different and we need to accept that mentally Anything in that spectrum is not grounds for comparison. There is no comparison. All you can ever truly be is yourself. The you that you are now has nothing to do with anyone else. I mean, other people can impact how you form your identity, how you shape your self-image. But at the end of the day, you are you. Nobody can play the role you're playing better than you can. So what's the grounds for comparison as it pertains to that? I think that the only thing that can truly be compared is the actions of people, not the people themselves. Because 
judging someone for who they are is much starkly different than judging somebody for what they've done. And now once you try to project your own bias onto somebody else's mental schema and mental psyche, then you're just inflicting them with your own unfit grounds for comparison built upon an unsteady foundation. We are all dealt different hands in life, so we have no reason to act as if we're playing in the same game. We cannot be compared if we're not really the same. We are far too within it to be spectators and judges of this ordeal at which we're taking part of. It's almost as if we're watching TV while we're on the TV. This negativity that we consume is digested and it becomes part of us and it becomes our expression. The negativity we've consumed as children and all the trauma that we've built up and accumulated is only being expressed in ways that we are kind of oblivious of. It's that negativity that's funneling into our expression that may not be like a conscious thing, but it's impacting us unconsciously in our day to day. So we need to treat what we give attention to with care and treat ourselves with care as well. So as to not allow this murked up negativity to impact our day to day. The more time you give to the positive and the more time you try to consume more positive information, the more your outlook on the world will be positive. So when giving yourself that attention, you're giving yourself the freedom to exist as you feel that you should.